Hello again, thanks very much for joining me. Um, this week's river pattern is a bit of a beast. So in the vise we have the Hanak Jig Superb 450 barbless hook and this is at size 12 and on the vise you currently see a small chartreuse 3mm tungsten slotted bead. Now this fly I can't claim any credit for whatsoever. Um, I've seen Howard Croston make a post about this and it was to do with a sacrificial fly really that would still be able to get to the depth you require. But this is a fly that I'm assured catches fish as well and having tied them for a couple of years now they, they are a, a great fish catcher. So the thread I'm going to use is the Vivas GSP it's just the white clear thread and first thing I'm going to do is put a tiny little touch of super glue as near to the bead as I can get it and I can scrape the rest along the shank and catch that in. So I'm going to just get a little bit of build up of thread there and then I'm going to remove my rat's tail. Okay, so the next thing then is I've taken a, a feather from my ratty old partridge cape here. I've already picked one out, cleaned off most of the debris from the back. And what I'm going to do with this is with my scissors, I'm going to come in to the center stem and just take that center away. So what I'm left with is this V-like um, feather if you like. So what I'm going to do now is come in with that. My fingers are going to get in the way but I'm going to simply grab the tips, pull the V up and catch the feather. Now this is going to represent the legs of the fly. Uh, sorry, yeah the legs of the fly. Uh, so if you've seen other peeping caddises, you'll know that the uh, you know the little head sticks out and then the little legs follow it. Now what I'm going to do now is come all the way down, and I need to get this as tight as possible. And I'm going to come and just get my thread right out of the way. Okay, so what comes next? is one of these tungsten body beads. Now this is the 3.7 millimeter uh, from Hanak and this one's gold although the color makes absolutely no difference. You can use whatever color you like. Now as you're aware and from uh, the video I showed you a couple of weeks back the bead generally goes over the top of a jig hook like so. But what we're going to do today is add it like this. So Firstly, I'm going to add a bit of super glue to the shank just to help it secure in. And then once that's in place, we can chat for a bit because uh, I need to wait for the glue to dry. I'm only kidding, I've got no chat in me. So, uh, I'm going to just capture that bead in now, in the slots. So as we we did uh, in the previous video, and if you missed that, I'll stick a little information bar up so that you can see. So basically, there's little grooves in the in the jig backs, and I've just caught my thread into that. And what I'm going to do is come back, all the way to the bottom. So that. That jig back's in place. I'm going to just move my hook in the vise slightly. And before I do anything else, I'm going to get my body material out. So what I'm going to use is some of this uh, nymph skin. Now, I've tried using everything. Uh, and this is by far the best material for the job I'm about to do. So uh, I'm going to use the tan one. You can use different colours to get different effects. But I've taken a bit of the tan, 
<coughs> excuse me, and I'm going to just cut a little slant in it like so. And if I can just catch the very slightest bit, like that, and then I'm going to get back onto my bead. So I've secured that in as you can see, and before I do anything else, I'm going to just coat the whole bead with super glue, and this just helps. So I'm going to bring my thread through that super glue. I'm going to just give it a couple of wraps to make sure it's in place, like so. So now what I can do is come around and cover the whole jig back with this. And it takes a little bit of practice to get this right. Uh, it took a lot of experimenting actually to get to find the right material to use for this body. Um, you, you don't have to do this, you know, simply colouring in the jig uh, where, where a marker pen would do the job if you're not fishing comps. Now if you're a competition angler uh, on the rivers, Phipps Moosh, you're not allowed to have any of this um, jig back shown. So hence the way I'm doing it like this. So this is uh, Phipps Moosh Legal and it packs a fair old punch. This comes in at well over a gram, uh, depending on what size of jig back you're using. You can get a tremendous amount of weight. So I've just caught that in there at the end. And it's still just going to fold it back on itself get a couple of turns in front then with my scissors I should be able to snip that away now I'm going to add a little bit of wax to my thread and then get a few more wraps in just so I'm content it's not going anywhere okay so I'm just going to open my vise and see what you're seeing now that should have splayed a bit more around, but I can I can sort that out when I come to finishing the fly. At the minute, I'm content it's just out my way. Okay, that's fine. So I've covered the hole of the jig back with my nymph skin. What I'm going to do now is with an assortment of pro markers, I'm just going to colour it in. So a bit of green there. Bit of green on your side and normally I would just open up my vise and just wreak havoc with with the pens so that's enough green seen enough of that I'm going to go on with a red next and then I'm going to finish off with quite a lot of the brown. And whichever colour or combination you choose, the last one has got to cover everything. So bear with me while I... It's like being back at school with a colouring in book. So I'm just nearly there with the brown. It's not really fly tying, is it? It's more like model building, but you know, if you're uh, a competition enthusiast, uh, I think you'd be uh, doing yourself a disservice not to have a few of these in your box. Now, 
the normal scheme of things, I would wait for my uh, marker pen to dry, but I know you don't want to sit and listen to me waffling on, so I'm going to get my UV resin out, and I'm going to now just go over the top of that. Plenty of resin. And uh, I would repeat this process two, three, four times um, to get that built up and solid. I'm not going to do it today because uh, it's for demonstration purposes, but one coat of resin will not keep this fly safe. You need to get plenty of resin on, and what I often do is I tie these in batches of five. So once I've gotten to this stage, I would super glue it first of all, then I would add resin, uh, three coats of resin, and then I would probably give it a coat of Sally Hansen hard as nails as well, because Archimedes principle or not, this is hitting the deck and it hits the deck hard. So the fly bounces across stones and gravel and if you've not um, given it the proper attention when you've made it, it will soon chip away and become dishevelled. It will still give you that weight that you want to get your um, your takeable flies down, but it's it's not. it doesn't look the same. It's all chipped and knackered. So time spent in the preparation of this is time well spent. Okay, but for the, for the demonstration purposes, I'm going to stop there with a the one coat. But usually, super glue first, then the resin, three coats, and then a coat of Sally Hansen put to the side. And then once it's all dry, you can then come back to finish the fly. And to finish the fly, it's fairly simple. I've got a little bit of a uh, pine squirrel, it's a tweak mix and I'm just going to catch that in, dub it on like so. Then before I wrap that dubbing over, I'm simply going to put a bit of super glue on my thread. Then I can come in, just tidy that all up. Just going to pull my legs round there and then get everything into the back and a half hitch for me and a figure of eight for UX, sorry, a whip finish tool for the experts, a couple of half hitches for me and there you go. Now this is, I got it from Howard Croston. Where Howard got it from, whether he's he actually came up with it, I've no idea. But what I would suggest to you is if Howard Croston's giving you a pattern, you should be paying attention because that boy can fish. There we go. Peeping caddis, just over a gram in weight. Hope you enjoyed that. If you like what I'm doing here, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time. First method, if you want to make them up, that's how to do it.